1964. And uh, a little later than that, uh, perhaps next year, we wrote a paper which we sent to the British Journal of Psychology, which uh, contained a number of these drawings. And uh, when this was published, we sent a copy to Escher, and he then incorporated these into two of his own drawings. In the meantime, he had designed Belvedere, which used similar principles to the things we had. It was quite independent of the, our own development. Uh, but the particular drawings, the triangle and the staircase, he incorporated into drawings of his own, or in, into uh, prints of his own. And here we have the staircase. This was developed specifically from the staircase that my father had designed. Later, he incorporated the triangle of mine into th this waterfall picture where the water goes round and round in an impossible way. I should explain what we mean by an impossible object. We have here a drawing. Now, if you look at it, each corner of this triangle is itself represents a possible configuration. You could have two rods jointed in this way and uh, in three dimensions, and this would be a drawing of such a picture. If I cover up the rest of it, you can see that this one is, this corner is possible. Again, this corner represents a joint between two rods, quite perfectly all right. Again, this corner does. If I cover up only one corner, you can see, again, this is possible. The rod recedes into the distance as you go around. There is no incompatibility. Again, here, it's perfectly consistent. But if I uncover the whole picture, you find that as you go around, the distance appears to get further and further away, or the, in the os opposite direction. You're getting closer to yourself, and, and it's inconsistent. So whereas the picture is, a, it's a possible drawing of a consistent configuration in each part itself, the whole thing is inconsistent. And you could not actually have an object which looks like this in three dimensions, which resembles this all the way around. On the other hand, it is possible to make a model which, because it, it's broken in one place, it, it does, when viewed from the right angle, it does, in fact, resemble such a thing. And my father made a number of models of impossible objects. The first one he made was the staircase. And this, if you view it from just the right angle, it, it will look like the staircase drawing. Now, but you see that it is broken, and you, still, you could not have an object which was consistently looked like that picture from every angle. But from exactly the right angle, it will look like, like the impossible staircase. A little later, he made a model of the triangle. And this, again, if you look from just the right angle, it will resemble the picture that we just had of the triangle. But you'll notice that it's broken. You could not have an object which from every angle resembled the impossible triangle. It's not possible in three dimension, ordinary three-dimensional space to have such an object. Of course, the artist Escher goes beyond geometric impossibility and reaches imaginary fantasy.
could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space. That was one of the things that Hamlet said in the play. Escher, like Hamlet, was fascinated by the idea of infinity, trying to bound infinity in a nutshell. And the pictures that he saw of mine gave him exactly that right flavor. And with that hint, he drew a picture called Circle Limit One. This was only a first attempt, and he was not very well satisfied with it. And he wanted me to tell him more about hyperbolic geometry, in which the points infinitely far away in the hyperbolic plane are thought of as being represented by a circle and everything inside the circle is the hyperbolic world. The effect is then that shapes are represented truly, angles are represented without distortion, but distances become distorted. The closer one gets to the circumference, the greater is the distortion. So the points on the circumference are to be thought of as being infinitely far away. French mathematician Poincaré described a very clever model for this kind of geometry and in that way he was able to see that all these black and white triangles are really the same size when they move further away even though they don't seem to be. It's analogous to the situation on a sphere where if this is a picture of the sphere, you see that the triangles in the middle seem to be larger than those near the circumference, but that is only perspective foreshortening. These on the sphere are all the same size. Similarly, in the hyperbolic plane, these triangles are to be thought of as being all the same size. And so it is when he made the green fish is going this way, the yellow fish is going this way, and so on. And this he found a very pleasing pattern, as indeed it is. And the symmetry of it is very interesting because, as a matter of fact, there are points of various kinds that be can be distinguished in the figure. For instance, the points where two yellow fins and two green fins come together and other points where four fins come together are all arranged in a very symmetrical fashion. The point in the middle where two yellow and two green fins come together is not essentially different from other points such as this where two green and two blue come together and this where two blue and two yellow and so on. Altogether an octagon of such